Welcome to Show Studios Fashion Week Roundup. In these videos, we discuss the most exciting moments from the schedule and key takeaways from the shows. For more live fashion commentary and content like this, make sure to subscribe to Show Studios channel. I'm Show Studios features editor Hetty Malik, and together with Nick Knight and Show Studios head of film Raquel Kikiro, we're going to be unpicking some of the best fashion films and live streams from Autumn Winter 21. We're going to be discussing Saul Nash, MM6, Mason Margiela, Moschino, and Prada. Back in 2020, Giorgio Armani became the first designer to hold an audience-free show as the COVID-19 pandemic brought the world to a halt, changing fashion week as we know it. Designers and brands have been adapting to new ways of communicating their collections ever since. And by embracing digital means of making contact with not only fashion press, but a global audience, the move towards fashion film and live stream shows means that anyone and everyone can tune in and have a front row seat. Founded by Nick Knight in 2000 as a platform for fashion film, Show Studio was the first to live stream a runway show in 2009 with Alexander McQueen's play to Atlantis. We've been championing fashion film and live streaming for over 20 years, giving unparalleled access to our, all of our viewers along the way. We're going to be talking about Saul Nash, Prada, Moschino and MM6, Mason Margiela. Um, so I think we should probably dive straight in. Um, and I thought we'd start with Saul Nash. Saul was on the London schedule, um, and I also thought it'd be nice to start with London because they were the first fashion week to go digital last June. Um, and there's a lot more kind of younger designers working in London, and I think they've kind of been quicker to embrace digital formats, um, while as we're seeing bigger brands maybe, you know, there is a mix, but some of them being more keen to try and just stick to what they know, which is the runway show. Um, so Saul's done, this is his third fashion film, um, and he works with his partner, FX Gobi, um, who's kind of his life partner and his kind of collaborator. Um, and Sol is a choreographer. So this is a very much a kind of performance based film. I was really, really drawn to. I looked at the, all the films that came out, that come out so far, and I thought it was something very personal in it. Um, and I think it comes from, <clears throat> and I think out of all of, all of the, all of the films we're reviewing today, I think for me, it's actually the most successful because it's his boyfriend or his partner, rather, that makes the films. And I think what you have there is the, the eye and the hand of the artist. So the engagement between um, FX, who actually made the film, seems very real and very tangible. He's actually engaged in the making of it. So it's his film in a way, or of course it's for the Saul Nash, but it's his artistic expression. And I know that he would be in lots of meetings and collaboration and talking and trying to come up with concepts and lighting and everything else. But you feel it's him behind the camera. You feel this is authored by somebody. Whereas if you look at some of the more you know, bigger houses that are doing fashion films, often it can feel a bit corporate and a bit really an expression of a designer's collection, but nothing tangible from an artistic eye who's actually behind the lens of the camera. I think this is where this film really scored for me. It's not true. I mean, all of the four films we picked are all good and all, all, all really, really interesting. But I think this really illustrates to me how important it is to have the person making the film is somebody who has an artistic opinion the designer respects. And I think that's really, really important. This is about one person's singular artistic vision on that collection. And for me, partly the, obviously, I really like the clothes, but actually like the, involvement of FX in the artistic creation of this film. Mm. It's interesting you say that actually, because I think Saul's, you know, a lot of his work is very much based about on his personal life and that community closely around him. So I yeah. think you're right that that, you know, this, that format kind of reflects that in his work. Um, and Cal and I spoke to him before he released the collection. He said that this is probably his most kind of personal um, showing um, as I mentioned, Saul's so choreographer. So all of these films are based around kind of performance and dance. So you always get this troupe of boys that have been choreographed by Saul. And it's just, I think the choreography is so beautiful. I was really interested to see what you guys thought about that element of performance, how that works in fashion film. Raquel, how did, what, did, what did it mean to you? How do you feel about it from your editing point of view? Knowing that Nash is actually a choreographer, I think it really shows on the film. Like you said, it really has like the eye of the artist in it. Um, it's about movement and his clothes are about performance. And I think that's what this film is really beautiful at because you can actually 
see the movement, see how the clothes fall. There's all the slow motion. And this film, you see a lot of details of the clothes, you know, how they perform, how they fall, the materials, the details of the zips. And I think that is actually really good because actually the clothes are the star and it kind of marries with this sense of community that really comes across. I think it feels really personal in that way. I also think it's beautifully shot. Yeah, so coloration is really well considered and very nice. And it reminds me of some of the, 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 the that great French film, La Haine, that yeah. came out, I can't remember, at the end of the 80s, beginning of the 90s, about the French kind of banlieue, the, the outskirts of Paris and the violence in it. So there's something that feels probably true to Saul Nash's um, uh, bringing up and probably, I don't know, but maybe also of his partner. And I think that's the thing, when you look at the, the films, you want to feel that, you know, real sort of, you know, sense of something that does move you emotionally rather than something that feels corporate and something that feels a bit sort of too much like they've got a film camera lighting team in to do to do it and that's it um i, I you know i i think that's a, the lovely thing and the casting's great as well in this yeah. you know so clothes are great cast is great lighting's great <laughs> film, yeah it scores you know so it, it for me it just worked on every every one of those levels i was really really pleased with. yeah also, it's like, it's perfect in the way that you never feel like it has a filler shot or it should be shortened or longer. It just shows you enough, you know, and you still want to see more, which I think is a really good thing. It's just like, I, I was so drawn by it that I didn't thought anything was missing, but I could have watched more, which I think is always like, want, longing for more is always a good thing after you watch these fashion films. Mm, I agree. And I think what you were saying, Raquel, about this just so suits the clothes you know Saul's yeah. fashion is all about it's technical wear but he'll he'll bring items forward to a collection if he's already working on the choreography and a jacket you know works for that for the film that he, or the choreography that he's making he'll bring those forward and yeah I just think this is such a symbiosis of all those different elements and I think fashion film is such a great format for Saul to be working with well should we move on over to Milan and talk Let's about Milan. something very different <laughs> Let's talk about Moschino. Okay. Very, very different. And um, kind of storytelling in a whole whole new format. Um, so Moschino, for those of you that don't know, is um, helmed by Jeremy Scott. Um, it's quite a Marmite one, I'd say. It really divides people. Because um, it's very much kind of about wit, kind of tongue-in-cheek, always kind of poking, poking at the industry a bit. Um, quite kind of often even cartoonish. Um, Last season, Jeremy kind of surprised everyone by doing this show with kind of puppets, marionettes, um, and the clothes weren't these kind of cartoonish, ironic designs that we were used to. They were kind of inside out couture like garments. Um, so I think we weren't really sure what to expect this season, but we've gone right back to the kind of kitsch kind of, yeah, ironic Moschino that we've kind of come to know Jeremy Scott for over the past few years. Um, what did you guys think of this? Right now? Um, oh, damn, I go first. Um, I love Moschino. I do really love the fact that Jeremy actually directed this film because I do think even though that's very different from Nash's film that we just spoke about, I still feel like it's very personal and I do feel like it's almost like a piece of his mind. You know, how he made the collection, how like the garments come one after the other. There was a storyline there. There was always there but you couldn't maybe see as much when it was a runway show but now he's presenting it how he's in seeing those girls the story behind she's going to the museum then she's going to the safari it feels fresh because it was so different from last season and again you do see the clothes a lot which is a good thing because sometimes in fashion films you cannot see as much of the clothes I think one of the lovely things about Jeremy Scott is it's, it's always a pleasure Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> when, when Jeremy does a, a collection, you know, there's always some sort of, you know, blast of energy that comes towards you. And now that the, you know, that the fashion world has changed, I mean, it used to be that fashion designers would show their clothes to basically fashion experts, so journalists and buyers. It wasn't really, they were never communications destined for the public. You know, it was always the fashion editor who would be then telling the public what the fashion designer had done. But now, of course, that layer has gone and the fashion designer is speaking directly to the public. So it is entertainment. Yeah. Um, and so actually being able to project his vision of these women and his love of these women straight to the public 
You know, it's something, it has to be entertaining. So his natural sort of tongue in cheek humor, his natural kind of cheekiness and his slightly kind of disruptive vision um, is, works very well in that way that, that makes it more into entertainment. I think the clothes come across very well. As Raquel picked out, you can see them, um, which of course is, uh, although an obvious part of this, when you look at some of the films that we um, uh, have seen throughout Fashion Weeks, you can't always see the clothes, but if you see the clothes, you can understand them and they look gorgeous and very Jeremy and, and very um, Moschino. So all of those things work for me. Of course, a lot of the girls, a lot of the girls, sorry, a lot of the women in, the, in this film are models I used to work with, you know, Zamba Valletta, Shalom Harlow, uh, Liberty Ross, really lovely to see Liberty. You know, so they, these are favorite models of mine from, you know, from the 90s and, and early 2000s. So it's a, a, real, um, a real pleasure just to see those girls modeling and to see them, um, you know, doing what, of course, they're brilliant at. So it's very heartening when you see somebody like Jeremy, you know, not saying, oh, well, you know, they're over, you know, 21 now, so I'll never use them again. Because, look, you know, the, a, a career in modeling is a very, very difficult thing. You know, you are, if you get into modeling, you are praised to the heavens of how beautiful you are, incredible you are, and all of a sudden, stops. And, you, and for anybody, that amount of praise and kind of, you know, pouring of, of sort of, you know, hyperbolic kind of emotion at you all day long. Oh, you're so beautiful, you're so beautiful. And then for that sign to stop, it's quite difficult. So I'm really pleased when I see designers using people who are not just in their late teens or early 20s, actually starting to look at women in their 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s and 90s, and still saying these are beautiful women. I think that message is really important. And Jeremy, as far as I know, is pretty good at that. Um, I would hesitate with a little tiny criticism, um, which he can hate me for, but it's not only meant in the best possible way. Um, I, sometimes I can't watch a film because of the hair or the lighting or that sort of thing. The little tiny things in film upset me. I couldn't watch any of Downton Abbey because of the lighting. Um, but it's, it, it, and this is riffing off Hollywood films from the 50s and 40s and probably early, even earlier on. But the lighting in those films is beautiful. It's part of the craft of making one of those old Hollywood films. And I would say to him and to the person lighting this, who, who, you know, and it's not easy to light a film at all. You know, that was where I wanted to see a little bit of a kind of raising of the game. If you're going to do something as involved as this and as also as pastiching this, uh, of, of that sort of Hollywood era, the lighting's a bonus. You know, look at some of the clothes, you know, the big hats and the big hair and the shoulders and all that sort of, that takes lighting beautifully. Put one spotlight right high up and the shadows that will cast on the cheekbones and the jaw and all the way down here will make the clothes look amazing, will make the girls look amazing. And of course, that's where it needs to be. So absolutely 100% behind Jeremy and everything he does and all that, the total kind of, you know, it's fantastic, but... I would like to see, in general, people start to look really at what you can do with film lighting. There's, there is a, a, a way to light films which is beautiful and it will help your clothes, it will help the models, it will help the public understand it. And all that's part of what you do. So as much as a musical score is incredibly important, it's beautiful. but it just needs a bit more, you know, a little bit more thought in the lighting, and a little bit more, you know, what you actually really need to see rather than trying to see everything. So um, there we go. I, I'm, I'm really, I, I hate criticizing people because I know exactly what it's like, but I just think that if that's a criticism that can be constructive, I hope that's, that's how it's taken. But I'm just going to throw this out there. This is supposed to be a fashion show within the fashion show. Yeah. I do think even knowing that it references like old 50s films, I do think it's supposed to be a presentation on a store. I, I do understand what you're saying. It could be explored more, blah, blah, blah. But I do think there's also a tongue in cheek in the lighting that is just like, ooh, we are inside of a store presenting this clothes and try to take this women into a trip. I think that idea of, that you were just talking about, Raquel, of this being kind of a show within show and, and Jeremy was thinking about kind of those salons in the 40s and 50s. So you have this element of the show, but then also these women sit down and it's like they're kind of watching a theatrical or cinematic show. So you get, as you mentioned, Raquel, you get taken from, you know, Manhattan to the jungle. And clothes-wise, I think one success is that you've got these really great kind of 
Franco Moschinoisms going on, like the kind of cow print and the skies. And um, there's some great dresses which have kind of, you know, instead of opera gloves, they're this massive scarf around the neck. And um, you've got dresses that are made up of class bags, you know, that you've got those great things. But actually, one criticism I, criticism I would have in the clothes is that Jeremy said that he's wanted to do a film like this for years and that he actually ended up making some of the clothes specifically for the film in mind. And I think maybe it's gone from being, you know, that Moschino irony to maybe being a bit too costumey at points. And the jungle scene, the actually that outfit that Shalom Harlow's wearing, I found it a bit kind of bit on the costume side instead of, you know, especially last season we sh we saw that kind of, you know, like almost couture level craft that Jeremy is knows how to do and is good at. So I think maybe at points it got too wrapped up in the in the theatrics, theatrics and the show within a show and it became maybe a bit lost at points, but I do think it was really entertaining. And in the end of the day, it's really sweet if you watch something that is this length and you come out with like a smile in your face. Yeah. You know, I know I did criticize that it does feel, I think the clothes do feel costume at the point, but on the other half of the side of that, it's kind of like the set and the clothes are so, you know, they're all so part of one thing. Like they all kind of completely connect with the other and create this 360 world, which you're just completely immersed into, which yeah. I think everyone could do a bit of, with, with a bit of escapism at the moment. <laughs> also, I don't know if we mentioned, but the set is amazing. You know, when there's that part that they rotate and you have like the cow part, that is so cool. I think the set is really, really impressive. Yeah, it's really good, isn't it? Yeah. It feels like you're kind of at the theatre watching a little show. I know. It feels almost like, you know, those paper theatres? Yeah. It feels a little bit like that. Yeah, it does. I think that's quite a nice transition, actually, from last season with the puppet yeah. show. And now it's like life-size and you're actually... Yeah. In it. <laughs> so I'd love to talk about MM6, Mesa Margiela next, um, which was also kind of a performance of sorts, um, kind of a, a runway show in reverse, if you will. Um, very in keeping with kind of the nature of um, Mesa Margiela. So MM6 is the diffusion line um, established in 1997. Um, so this is designed by the kind of anonymous team that um, kind of everyone thinks of Margiela for in their kind of white coats. You've got one guy on the piano and his white Margiela coat, which I thought was a really nice kind of touch. You kind of just catch him. Um, <laughs> have this show kind of back to front. So we start with the the Finnish in French, I'm not going to try and say it because my accent will be awful. Do it, um, do it, do it. <laughs> no, we go, no. Um, holding it up in silver and then we kind of rewind. Um, and this was quite a small collection. MM6 is also always kind of a small little capsule, which is much more kind of tailored to the street um, compared to and kind of more youth orientated than maybe the main line is. That's kind of why it was established. Um, so let's dive straight in. What did you guys think of this film? You know, when you hear people talk about iconic shows and they talk about how it was and how it was in their minds, there's actually this like magic of being in a fashion show and it has like all the character, but you are there, but you're not there. It seems almost like a memory of a fashion show in a way. You don't see a static shot in this film. You going into each model and then you keep on moving around backwards and forwards. I think editing wise, it just has a really great pace. This filmmaker actually has been working with MM6 for a long while. It feels almost like a family. And I think everyone looks really great on it too. Mm. I really, I really, really love this show. I think it's interesting you say behind the scenes as well, because last season MM6 did a film which was kind of like a photo shoot and- yeah. Um, you couldn't see anyone's heads, but it was all of them in their white coats, you know, from the guy painting the set to the guy behind the camera. Yeah. And I think because there's this whole um, kind of anonymity behind Margiela, you know, obviously we've got John there now, but, you know, there's this whole sense of the anonymous team behind. So actually to do something where you're seeing behind the scenes, you know, in this you go behind backstage of the show, it's quite interesting to have that twist on it. In a way, it makes you feel like you're not just watching a show, you're part of a show, because they also take you like behind, they present you the models, you can see everyone getting ready behind them whilst you have the close-ups, and in the end, they're all celebrating, it makes you feel like if you were there, and if you're part of that gang, and I think that it felt very lovely to me. Yeah, you I, go, Nick. <laughs> I really liked it, you know, I, I like much out of the brand, obviously I'm really, um, very keen on John. I'm very keen on what he's doing um, 
there. So, you know, I'm, I'm one over already. So I'm going as a bit of a fan, I'm afraid. Uh, but I was really pleasantly, um, uh, you know, not surprised, but I really was really happy seeing the film because there's a lot of poetry in it and it feels very un in keeping with the brand. The subtleties are sort of surreal subtleties are starting, starting with the end. A lot of the reverse filming um, was very subtly put in um, and it didn't, you know, it's, it is an effect, but it, it doesn't, didn't deroute you. It didn't stop you enjoying a sort of, you know, the, how the film's unrolling and, you know, seeing a film backwards, but then there's backwards within the film. They're just very nice, surreal, poetic moments. And you can feel sort of, you know, um, references to, uh, you know, different sort of filmic artists from the surrealist era, um, which I think is in keeping of Margiela, the brand. Um, I do, you know, I liked it a lot. I like the backstage element. I like the genuine emotion that happened in some of the performers. So there's one girl who gets covered and she literally, her smile is just amazing. You know, she gets covered in the, in the glitter and she just laughs, but it's so believable and so lovely and feels so fresh. Um, and I like that bit at the back of the uh, backstage where they do that scene. I'm not sure it's exactly this, but it's a bit the scene in Jaws where, um, you know, the, the camera travels in towards the central character. Yeah. This, there you go. This is, and the, as you travel in, you change the, 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 um, the lens, the optic of the lens. So it appears to do a weird thing to the background and propel the person forward. There was a bit of that. So a bit of a sort of homing on, a, on what feels like quite a private moment. So you almost had this sort of feeling that you were inside that particular model's mind. It was believable when they're dancing at the end and, they're, you know, they're, and they're, they feel actually joyful and joyous. So the emotions I thought were really believable. Um, and I just, you know, it, it, it's, it's something you kind of wanted to be at, as Raquel says, you wanted to be there. You wanted to be at that club, I wish it exist. I thought as a, as a very, again, tiny negative point, um, I wanted to see some other people in the audience because the club is the club is the club, but the club is also defined by its audience. And I would, have, I would have liked to have seen more work on the people who weren't the main performers. Um, and you can imagine a sort of Otto Dix kind of way, those sort of characters could have been watching this, this, this show. But otherwise I thought it was a super poetic, really clever, um, nicely filmed, beautifully lit, um, you know, and of really lovely clothes. So, you know, and the models look like they're authentically enjoying being there, enjoying taking part in it. So it's a very watchable um, and a very enjoyable um, film to, you know, to see. There is like such a, a fresh way of showing clothes in a way, because when you see the models walking the catwalk, you usually have them like walking towards you and that's the catwalk look that you have, but you have a lot of back and them walking forward. And then when you see them, then walking forward, they were like moving backwards on reverse, which I feel like there is, like you say, is really poetic. There's this continuation and this new ways of actually seeing fashion, which you never, you couldn't explore if you were in a runway. Do you know what I mean? Because you would just see them coming towards you. But here you actually see the view from the back, which I love. I think that's really important for these clothes as well. You know, you catch the details. You know, these clothes were all kind of on the theme of being back to front, like the show is. So you've got yeah. kind of there's a pair of jeans which are back to front, and they're so beautifully fitted that you actually don't notice straight away that you know the bum is on the front and yeah. stuff. Like the jackets have, you know, they don't just have one set of buttons; they've got three. Um, jackets are back to front, but you know, beautifully fitted. So it's kind of a double take, and they're things maybe that you wouldn't catch you know kind of the inside stitches on the outside that you wouldn't catch if you just saw it in a show or in maybe in a different format. A film like this allows a designer to to actually put the spotlight excuse the pun but on the you know on the thing that he or she is finding really exciting and thinks it should be communicated um, so I do think it's good and also when you're looking at a fashion film you want to have you know all films work by empathy so, you know, if you, if you watch a film and you have no empathetic engagement with the characters, just, you know, it doesn't, you know, if you don't feel sorry or accept or, 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 or love or whatever it is for anybody in the film, then why should you bother to watch it? You know, it's just people you don't care about. Um, and I think what they've done here in the MM6 show is actually make you care about these people. So I think that's what fashion films like these are so heartwarming to see, is you fairly start to engage with these people as characters. And I think all the films that we've spoken about so far are such an extent, they're not only kind of really feel the characters, but they're such an extension of 
the brand and the designers kind of world and narrative it doesn't feel like oh god I can't hold a show so I've got to just show my collection online it feels like a well thought and mean like it feels like an honest all of them feel honest and like they were made with enjoyment you know like these were acts of joy not just doing it because they have to I mean it really brings the clothes alive in a completely different way than just having it you know in a stiff way and I think that's quite interesting segue to move on to Prada um, kind of moving slightly away from fashion film to more of kind of a stylized a runway show but not with an audience kind of more of this traditional models walking past you but we've got this immersive set by Rem Koolhaas who did the set for last season's menswear so we're going through all these different rooms which are kind of made of marble and for really kind of you know tactile is the word that I keep using to describe this show um because this was made very much with a digital audience in mind um all the shows have had these Q&As with Raph and Mucha afterwards and they've spoken about how they really wanted it to you know come through to the digital viewer um and it's been kind of one of the biggest hits actually menswear had about three and a half million this show is already at kind of 1.5 million which is a lot more than a lot of shows which have been on youtube or whatever streaming site for quite a few months now so it seems to be kind of definitely something that people are tuning in and watching because actually on a whole you know these digital fashion weeks haven't necessarily brought in loads and loads of viewers um but prada seems to be someone that um, people are responding to and for one reason or another are actually tuning in to watching. Um, what did you guys think about this? I know we might all have mixed feelings. <laughs> you, you have two absolute geniuses in, in, of fashion working together. I mean, if you didn't have enough with just Mitch Prada doing it, now you've got Raph Simmons doing it too. You know, it's like, you know, having Mozart and, and, and Beethoven in the same concert, you know, it's like, okay, you, you, you know it's going to be huge in terms of, um, of what they're trying to say and how they do it. And the aesthetic, and you know, Mitch Prada's worked with Rem Koolhouse for a long time now. Um, and so he clearly has a great understanding of what she's doing and her aesthetic. It's so beautiful, you know, just take it as paintings. I mean, though, that blue, you know, the, the, the mixture of, 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 the, of the textures and the colors, you know, it's, it's like th- these people are walking through paintings. Um, you know, and, and it's, it's an incredibly powerful, subtle vision. Um, but I, I, you know, I love this for all the reasons that I, you know, can love a Prada show, is the clothes are amazing. And you do get to see it, and it's very, on the whole, it's very clothes, clothes in an environment focused, which is fine. Um, so, you know, you're, what you're seeing here, you know, is real sort of pointers for how fashion will be for the next year, whatever, you know, long the effect of a, of a strong fashion show has. And I think it's also interesting because, of course, we've all been you know, kind of a bit surprised and excited by these two massive designers you know, coming together as, as one sort of creative force. And I think, you know, it's been pretty widely said, so I'm nothing, adding nothing new here, but this does feel like the collection where their vision has gelled, um, where they're actually a little bit more in sync, where perhaps before you were trying to work out who did what and um, where it came from and, you know, which, which, which of the two it came from. And I think that in itself is a very forward step. I was, you know, uh, I thought that you know, there's something incredibly tactile about the color, and color is one of those things which is, inc- if you know what you're doing with it, is very, very powerful. Um, juxtapositions of color, especially, um, and so you know, these, as I say, almost like living paintings, um, are just beautifully conceived and beautifully put together. And you know, whether that credit goes to Raf, to Mucha, to to, to Rem Koolhaas or, or whoever. <laughs> It's very successful, and it really is fashion on a, on a high art level. Um, so, you know, it's a fantastic thing. The thing about the fashion shows is you, know, you get these visions in a very different, you know, from Moschino to the MM6 to Saul Nash. None of them are better or worse in a way to watch. They're, you know, they're all they're artists expressing themselves, and I never understood why that wasn't recognised. Every fashion season, you have about 300 people of an artistic persuasion pouring their hearts out to you. It's a real gift. And I'm surprised at the sort of cynicism people throw at fashion because, you know, 
Mucha, Rem Coolhouse, the guy who did the music, all this, sort of, you know, those are great minds to see at work. They're a privilege to see at work. So, you know, absolutely sort of, you know, a real bonus to our culture to see, you know, what they're doing and whether you like it or hate it or et cetera, et cetera. I think you should at least realize that this is an incredibly important cultural moment when the fashion shows happen and a lot of reflection of who we are as a, as a species, who we are as different cultures is reflected in how people, you know, present these shows. Um, anyway, Raquel. <laughs> um... This film feels very different from all the other ones, just because, not in a bad way, just in a different way, like you said. It, for me, it feels a little bit less personal in a way, but more like a really well-oiled machine. I love how well choreographed all the camera work is, so your eye is following you exactly what they want you to see. You know, you start with the the lapel of the jacket and then you go down to the shoes and then you fall and you track back with the shoes. I do think that is a really clever thing. Um, do you really feel that the tactileness of this set, walking you know. in those shoes, which as you said in your review, are going to be very quickly. Um, <laughs> to, yeah, but on that fur is yeah. a really tactile thing. Um, and that, you know, the, it's very clever. It's very, it's, it's well done in a way that MM6 was very clever. It's also very clever. Um, and I, I do think that there's, there's, there's something, you know, that th there are different sorts of films being proposed here, but much as, as there are on a cinema. If you want to go to the cinema and watch an old Goddard film, you might want to do that one day. Next to that, you want, might want to go and watch the latest kind of, you know, version of a Marvel comic. You know, we're not people who only believe in one thing or only have one one taste. You can easily sit back and watch some experimental bit of 60s minimalism at the cinema as much as you can watch some great blockbuster or a rom-com or whatever it is. It doesn't mean because you like Prada, you have to hate everything else or because you love um, Moschino and what Jeremy Scott does, you can't like what Prada's doing or can't love what Prada's doing. You know, that chrome of blue is such a color. You know, I've been working a lot with that chroma blue for Kanye West. So, you know, I know the power of that color and one shouldn't underestimate the power of color. It's really, really strong on the emotions. You know, there are people, you know, painters forever have been aware of this and, you know, people who, like Kandinsky, you know, are, are just aware of the sort of, you know, the emotive power of mixing different colors. And that's exactly what this works on. So it's very clever and it's very well done. And it's all, yeah, but of course it would be. It's not two young designers who are trying to find their feet. These are people who have been incredibly successful at doing, um, you know, fashion shows over the years for different brands. You know, Raff's worked for Calvin, for under his own name, for Dior, for Jill Sander, each time with a big success. You know, so this is, these, these are virtuosos of fashion. So, of course, it's going to be good. It would be such a surprise if it wasn't. I mean, I think this sensory space, because as I mentioned, had it for menswear, but, you know, really kind of works when you're talking about Prada because Prada is it you know there's all these kind of conversations about which I won't repeat because it's kind of like beating a dead horse but that you know the whole conversation about Prada being you know with bad taste and ugliness but when you see a Prada collection it really um kind of invokes a physical feeling and reaction in you and this set does the same you know you've got and as you follow it through you're moving into all these different color spaces and all these different textures and then that's also tied into the clothes which um you have all these different you know you've got these kind of garish sequins and then these furs and then you know as you mentioned like the boots which i'm really obsessed with and won't stop banging on about <laughs> um, <laughs> I'm you've got a bit of space to do that again actually. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah you've got all these different elements and obviously you know that pull that i mentioned of a lot of views is because it's this marriage of rough cements and prada um, and last season was men's, so you've probably got that whole Raph Simmons menswear cult coming in. But I think it's really interesting that we've had the kind of this marriage for women's wear where this really feels like it's working. And I think the mix of having the kind of more traditional models walking, but then in this very immersive art space is allowing for this kind of conversation between Raph and Mucha to kind of emerge yeah. and to tell its story in a more expansive way than you'd be able to do if you know if things were normal and we you know they'd probably be holding a show wouldn't they if we were in normal times but this actually I think is a blessing in disguise because 
you know, I was so excited to tune into this after menswear because yeah, yeah. I'm so taken to this Prada world. All right. Well, thank you. Thank you very much, Hetty, for, for allowing us thank to Thank you. Thank, thank you, you so much, much for joining me. Pleasure. Good fun. Thank you. Thank well, you. Everyone, everyone watching, we've got Paris reviews coming up soon. Um, and yeah, be sure to visit Show Studio for all our coverage. And we will see you next time. Thanks, guys. Thank Thanks you. a lot. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Bye.